Hello and welcome and thank you for joining. Today we're going to look at a use case for after update flow. I did make a video on a similar use case but by using a process a while back. Uh, we're going to try to use a flow this time because obviously flow are a lot faster and uh, have a very good performance than the process. So let's take a look at the use case. So today we're going to deal with account hierarchy and this was uh, one of the questions that I got from uh, someone in my email. So Basically, I have an account here, Pyramid Construction, and what I want to do is if I update, there's an active checkbox or active pick list on my account, uh, yes and no. If I update this parent account to no, the flow should then update all the child even under hierarchy, so all the children on, in the hierarchy of this parent to no. So basically, if I go to this hierarchy here, I have, yes, right now I have one child under this and then there is multiple child two level and then I've got third level child so all these child accounts active flag should also be set to no if I update the parent and if I update it on this level it will obviously update the lower levels so uh, let's take a look at the flow and I do have a flow built out but I'm gonna just quickly show how to start on it um, if you are getting started with flow so click on flow and we're already here. Click on new flow. And it's going to be a record triggered flow. I'm gonna stick with free form. Um, and the reason we're using after the record is saved after update flow is because this is something that the user will be updating. Um, and that's my requirement. Your requirement could be a record is updated or created. It really depends. We're using after, not before, because we are dealing with related records. So it's always good to deal with, um, it's always a good idea to use the after update if you're dealing with related records and not the before update. All right, so we're gonna hit done. So now let's choose an object here, account. And this is where you can set the condition. So for me, the condition is active and active equals no, so that's my condition. And this is very important here, when to run the flow for updated records. So if you choose the option one, every time a record is updated and meets the condition requirements. So every time somebody updates an account, doesn't matter which field, let's say if they update something else on the account like rating or address or whatever field it is, and if that account is meeting this criteria, it will then fire this flow and try to update all the children accounts with that same active checkbox, um, active value. And this could be very well what you need. Um, this one is more specific. So if you want your flow to not fire on every single edit, you would go with this option. Um, I would compare it to the workflow rule. So when you're trying to create a workflow rule, it asks for you the same thing. I think it's the third option where it says, only fire if this specific changes are made to the record. Um, in this case though, so let's say if I have a parent so in this case, um, just to show you, if I have a parent uh, with an active of yes, and let's say if this child on the second level is already no, and if I'm only firing that value uh, of active equals no, if I, sec if I select the second option, what's gonna happen is uh, the flow will run to look at the first option like, okay, it's no. Let me fire for the child and make that active equals no. Then it's going to come to third level and what it's going to see is, okay, this is already no, so let me stop right here. And then it will not get any of these children records because we are saying if we, if we define it only when a record is updated to meet that condition requirements. I hope that made sense. Um, let me know if you, if you have more questions on that. But basically, in this requirement, I have to pick this one. To make sure all the children hierarchy are in fact meeting the requirements and they are updating to active equals no if the parent if the top parent is no so hit done um, and after that so since here we are trying to update the children obviously we need to get records we have to get all the children records so we're going to say get child accounts done and Object again is account here. Usually it would be a different object, but since it's an account hierarchy and account children, we're just saying the same object. And here 
parent ID equals, we're going to pick record, which is the current account that's being updated, dot ID. So account ID. And we want all the records because we want all the children and we're just going to store all fields. You can also choose to store just the active field. But for simplicity, I'm just going to store all the fields here and hit done. So um, here what we need to understand is because we are saying fire in every edit, first the process will, the flow will come to the first level. It will update the child. Now for the child, since the child is getting updated, it will again fire the same flow, update the second level. And then since that active is getting updated, it will fire the, the third level. So that's how the flow is working on the background because for the flow, these all are accounts in fact. So they will all actually run the same flow and update the records in the background. So one um, thing to be very careful about here is if you are doing something like this, uh, make sure you don't uh, be very um, conscious of how many automations you're running on account because you might run into situation of CPU time limits, software errors, like there might be so many situations you might run into if your org is come too complicated. So take, a, so take a lot of precaution while using something like this, uh, especially if you are choosing the option one, because this is basically saying that your flow will fire every time a record is updated. So just an extra caution there. Um, and if your org is, Smaller, uh, it might not be a big issue. So just make sure that you're testing this right before you deploy it to production. Um, okay, so we got all the child accounts. Now we need to bring a loop element because we have a list of, uh, we have a collection of child accounts. So we just need to loop through child accounts. And that's the collection variable and first item to last item, that's fine. And then we need to get an assignment to actually assign the each element, each record in the loop. So it's like taking one single account, loop account to active equals no, because we have the child as no, and we want to set all the children as no. So the assign loop account to active equals no, and this is where uh, Salesforce, uh, the flow automatically creates the loop variable for you. So you can just say this variable loop through child accounts dot active because that's the value we're trying to set. Should appear. Go back here, active. And there we go. Active equals no. That's the value. Hit done. Let's connect these. And then once you have actually the values assigned to the loop you need to now start collecting those loop variables inside a separate list so that you can update that list in one go and i do have uh, different videos on loops and how to assign this if you are looking to learn more so assign loop variable to collection and here you're going to need to create a new resource variable list list of list of account to be updated and the data type would be record but it will be a multiple values because we are going to get multiple values because there might be multiple accounts obviously for one single parent so count and here you have to say add because you have a list and you're trying to add all these individual loops uh, loop variables inside that big list. So go back, uh, hit that dot. So th if this is a list of record, this value should be a record. So that's why we, we didn't have a dot there because it's a variable. Now dot add, and so that will give us the actual variable, uh, actual list of variables that we need to update. Now then we connect it from assignment to loop. So that means the loop is finished there. And at last, we just need to update. So update records, update child accounts. And this is where you have two options. We are going to have to select the first option because we do have a record collection. So the collection will be the collection we just created, list of accounts to be updated. And hit done. So that 
is your last step. Going to say save. Activate this. Okay, so now we're coming to pyramid construction. I'm going to make sure the child one has. So we have a child one which has active. No, I'm going to change it to yes so we can test it out. So I have finished updating the, all the hierarchy accounts with certain values just to show you the example. In my example, child three has a value of yes, active is yes. Um, and if I go to the parent, I've got the value of yes as well. So what I want to show you is by updating this to no, all the children should be changed to no, no matter how deep they are in the hierarchy. So I'm going to do active, change it to no, hit save, and it should run for all the accounts which have the active is no, uh, active is yes. So we've got active no. So what it should do is now change all the child accounts to no. I'm going to go down to child one. Got no there, so that's good. Going to go child two level, which has got active no. And similarly, child three should also have an active of no. So it was just updated. Uh, I hope that was helpful. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions or comments or any other use case that you want me to look into. Thank you so much for watching.